Welcome back everybody. This is my channel living in South Denver and today I'm going to be taking a look at some of the pros and some of the cons about living in Lone Tree, Colorado. So stick around. I'm going to unpack all of that next. If this is your first time visiting the channel, thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Bill Knapp. I'm a full-time licensed realtor working in the Denver metro area with focus on the southern metro Denver areas. And I produce these videos as a way to give some high-level detail and information if you're considering a move either within the city or from outside moving into the Denver metro area. I try to cover a good amount of detail in each one of these videos. That said, if I missed something that you had a question about or if I didn't quite cover it enough, do me a favor, leave me a comment below. I'll do my very best to get back to you in a quick, timely manner, or reach out to me directly. My phone number is listed below as well. Give me a call. We can jump on a Zoom, see if possibly working together is a good fit, or I can just help you out with any questions you have. All that said, let's go ahead and jump into it. Talking about the city of Lone Tree, Colorado, which in my opinion is one of my more favorite locations in the metro area. It's kind of a, uh, a gem hidden between Highlands Ranch and Parker, and it has a lot to talk about. So, Let's jump into it. If you're not familiar with the actual location of Lone Tree, it is a smaller neighborhood located to the southeast of the Denver metro area, right along the I-25 corridor next to the RTD light rail line. It's flanked by Highlands Ranch on the western side and Parker out on the eastern side, and it's just below Littleton and Centennial, making it a very optimally central location, which is excellent for commuting, getting to and from anywhere you need to go in the Denver metro area, or just hopping on a highway Way real quick to go down to the springs or all the way out to the mountains. As far as commuting times go, if you're leaving from Lone Tree and you're heading up to downtown Denver because you're so close to the highways and given the time of day that you travel, you can probably get to downtown in about 30-ish minutes or so. If you are a person that works in the Denver Tech Center, your drive will be roughly 15 minutes. And if you're one of those that has to travel out to Denver International Airport for those business trip flights, you can take the tollway and get there in about 36 minutes. If you go 225 to 25, depending on traffic, it should still be 35 minutes, but it might be as much as 50 minutes, depending on backups. Aside from commuting, the location for Lone Tree is actually really optimally placed because it gives the residents there quick and easy access to several different trailheads, which are hard to find in these built up suburban locations. It's also not too far from the outlets at Castle Rock, giving you quick access to the south. And it also has access out to the east and the west. So take your pick, it's at every major junction for all of our highways, making it super easy to make your commute wherever you happen to be going. The next positive thing about Lone Tree, which is kind of anomaly, is that it's very, very small and compact and it's filled with so much to do as far as entertainment, food, eating, and hanging out that it's going to be impossible to cover all of it. So I'm going to give you my top pick highlights of all the things that you can find to do in Lone Tree. The first that most people will recognize is going to be the Park Meadows Mall, which is a highly sought after, probably one of the top shopping locations in the Colorado area. Like it's on TripAdvisor. People come to Denver and they drive down to Park Meadows Mall to visit it. It has an outdoor pavilion with some high-end eating as far as steakhouses, white chocolate grill, rodizio grill, cheesecake factory, and then really high-end shops on the inside. The user experience is incredible. It's just one of those places that people have to visit when they're in the area. On the south end of Lone Tree, you're going to find the Lone Tree Center for Performing Arts, which is a highly sought after venue where they host a lot of amazing talks, lectures, actual performances. You can rent some of the areas out and host an event there. It's And it's also in a building that is absolutely gorgeous. So another unusual thing inside of Lone Tree for entertaining is that it has one of the only indoor skydiving opportunities we have in the entire Denver metro area. There's three different indoor skydiving areas that I'm aware of in Colorado. One in the Springs, one I think way out in the mountains, and one right here centrally located in Lone Tree, which is absolutely incredible. Going back into the shopping aspect of things, Lone Tree also has one of two locations in the state of Cabela's and it is an amazing store. You walk in, I mean, if you've been there, you know what it's like, you've seen it. Super high ceilings with incredible taxidermy up all on the ridges, amazing shopping, all you need kind of thing in one big store, sportsman's paradise. As far as outdoor activities, there's a handful of trailheads as I mentioned earlier on, which will get you access to the east-west trailhead. You can find your way over to the bluffs, which is an open air park. 
hike your way up and around the bluffs, which is actually a bit of a lung buster. Even if you're in good shape, people still train on the bluffs because of the elevation gain you can receive, which is a rare thing to find in these Southern Metro neighborhoods. If you're a golfer, you have to go check out the Lone Tree Golf Club and Hotel. It has a really iconic clubhouse, a really beautiful course, and there's mountain views depending on where you are on the course. And from what I understand, I'm not a golfer. I really stink at it. People that have played that course think it's beautiful and they really love it. And it's one of those that are highly recommended not only because you can get to it very quickly with lots of hotels nearby and being close to the highway but also because it's just the outdoor open air and it's located right here in the central location. So it's super fast and easy to get to after a long day at work. And lastly, I have to talk about the various types of food you can find in Lone Tree. I'm a bit of a foodie myself and the variety you can pick from here is incredible considering it's such a small space. Not only do you have all the amazing food and restaurants up in the Park Meadows area, as you move a little further south into Lone Tree, you'll go to one of my favorite spots being Sierra, which is located just next to the Cabela's that is one of my top picks for a date night it has amazing food the atmosphere is kind of unbeatable nice views off the backside and it has a pretty decent happy hour now if you really want a dedicated happy hour i recommend you go to the blue oyster bar it's a bit on the pricey side but the drinks are incredible and the appetizers are really high end it gives it a kind of an elegant happy hour feel and if you're looking for a not so elegant happy hour go up the road a little bit you're going to find rio which is famous for their margaritas some people actually black out on the margaritas, which is not recommended, but you're allowed to get, I think, up to two of them at this location. They are very delicious. They go down very fast. This is situated right next door to Grist Brewery, which has amazing microbrewed beers done locally, and the atmosphere inside of there is kind of steampunkish, so it's got a unique, unusual vibe. The next positive thing about looking and living in the Lone Tree area is going to be the housing. If I had to summarize what the houses look like in Lone Tree, I would most likely say that they are very clean and modern with a contemporary flair. The way that the neighborhoods in Lone Tree are laid out is kind of unusual because they have the I-25 and RTD light rail lines sitting right along the eastern edge. There are a lot of condominium, townhome, and apartments that are kind of serving as a buffer between all that, con that, all that commuting noise and the adjacent neighborhoods. But that said, those apartments and condos and such are actually really highly sought after. I know a lot of young professionals that work there or business people that do TDYs and have a location in those apartments, making it super easy for their commute. And those compared to the rest of Lone Tree are relatively affordable. Some of my favorite neighborhoods inside of Lone Tree would probably have to be the Enclave and Heritage Hills. Both of them are gated communities. They include a private pool and access to trails. And the homes inside are absolutely decadent. Some of my favorites to take people on tours. As you move your way a bit to the western side of Lone Tree, you're going to encounter the golf course communities, which is also a gated area. Over by the Cabela's and Sierra restaurant that I mentioned, those homes are going to be a bit more classic contemporary. They're situated up on a hill, so a lot of them will have decent views, but they were also constructed recently, so they have very small plots. And moving away from the gated communities, there are plenty of options for your standard traditional suburban residential locations. A lot of these homes are two story to one story and they were built in the mid 1990s to maybe the late 80s or so. And because of that, they're gonna have some slightly larger yards compared to the eastern side of Lone Tree and they're gonna have more mature trees, which is a really positive benefit. And the final point about the different styles of homes and location with Lone Tree that is actually kind of like icing on the cake, Niche.com rated Lone Tree, Colorado as number 10 best suburb place to live in all of the state of Colorado. Another positive thing about the Lone Tree area is going to be its school system. All of the schools inside of Lone Tree are located within the Douglas County School District, which is arguably the number two-ish slot as best rated school district in the entire state of Colorado, which means that if you have kids or you're planning on having kids, the opportunities they're going to have as far as scholastics go are going to be very strong when living in this neighborhood. Now, of the types of schools you can expect, they have basically a little bit of everything. There's some private schools, public schools, a handful of charter and magnet schools. All of them have excellent ratings. Based on niche.com, it receives an A for the entire area, meaning that the curriculum is strong, the graduation rates are very high, and that overall everything is going to be well-rounded so your kiddo gets a really good 
good education. And finally, building off of the schools and moving over into the employment and types of jobs, the job diversity inside of the Lone Tree area is actually pretty incredible. In regards to the type of employment or employers in Lone Tree, there are several big players that you can count on for some amazing job opportunities. The first and most noticeable primary employer for Lone Tree is going to be Charles Schwab. They have a very large complex. It's noticeable right as you come off of the highway. It employs several hundred people right there at that location. And a lot of those people tend to live right here in the Lone Tree area. So they have very, very short commutes. Another major employer for the area is going to be Sky Ridge Medical Center and some ancillary medical facilities in the commercial buildings located in and around Lone Tree. Sky Ridge Medical Center is considered to be one of the premier medical centers we have in the southern metro area and it houses a lot of employment opportunities for medical staff, all of whom or most of whom tend to live in this Lone Tree area. In addition to Charles Schwab and the Sky Ridge or the medical facilities, there's also a super target. I've also touched about all the various service industries we have there for all the different restaurants. So whatever your fit is, there's probably gonna be a job opportunity for you located in Lone Tree. So, have to get into some of the negatives about Lone Tree and the biggest, most obvious one is gonna be the cost. The cost of living and the expense of acquiring a property inside of the Lone Tree city limits. Now, comparing the city of Lone Tree to the US national average, where US national average is rated at 100% for a baseline, the cost of living inside of the Lone Tree area is gonna be at 161.8%, which means it's 61.8% more expensive to live in Lone Tree on a day-to-day -day basis than it is against the national average. I think a big driver for that number being so high is gonna be the housing. Because Lone Tree is a bit more of a, an affluent, bougie, luxury area, the average entry point to get into a single family home for Lone Tree is gonna be about $847,000. There are a lot of opportunities for townhomes and condos where you can purchase those well below that average entry point. Those are gonna be going in the range of about $578,000 to $600,000. And for the uh, sake of argument, in full transparency the majority of the homes especially in the gated communities are over by the golf course those start at about 1.12 million so like I was saying it's a very affluent community which can be very expensive and that may be a bit of a pricing factor that forces some buyers out of that location another drawback for the Lone Tree community is going to be its traffic because it's centrally located it's right next to I-25 and it has that RTD light rail system and you have a lot of people either migrating into or coming out of that area to make their daily commutes. The traffic on the major highways and on the secondary roads tends to back up, especially during the morning and evening commutes. Another con for the Lone Tree area is going to be a lack of centralized community events. The amount of people who actually live in Lone Tree is right about 13,000, making it one of the smallest communities we have in the southern metro area. And as a result, there's no big farmers markets. There's not an outdoor amphitheater that people go and hang out. There's not a lot of big gathering spots where all the residents of Lone Tree gather. It's a bit more where they rely on the surrounding infrastructure to drive those community events. And that's gonna be stuff like the Lone Tree Center for Performing Arts, or it's gonna be going up to the Park Meadows area, making a trip down to Castle Rock. So the sense of community is really hyper localized to your neighborhood versus like a community gathering like you would find over in the Highlands Ranch or in the Parker areas. And the last thing I'll say that I'm not a huge fan of for the Lone Tree area would be how densely packed in they did all of the housing. Uh, the earlier homes that were built in the late 80s, early 1990s or so on the western side, those actually are spaced out a little bit better. You'll have some of those mature trees and decent sized yards. But as you make your way closer to the highway, they really, really densely pack in those homes, especially as you get towards the Cabela side of things on that southern end. And with that dense packing in of homes, you're going to have very, very small plots, very small yards, and there's going to be a huge lack of mature trees. So it doesn't have like a huge, like traditional neighborhood feel. It's more of a newer community feel, which if that's your fit and feel, you know, that's great. Um, there's some opportunity for more of the traditional neighborhood feel on the western side. It's actually a bit more affordable there too. 
but it, that would probably just be for my end a bit of a drawback i tend to like the more traditional trees relax hanging out you know waving to neighbors kind of thing and that wraps up my pros and cons about living in the lone tree area hopefully this was helpful gave you some high level ideas or thoughts on what you can expect if you're looking to move into this area or if you're looking to move nearby or maybe it spurred an idea or a question that you might have and if so do me a favor leave me a comment below and i'll respond to your questions also if you found anything that i provided in this video helpful or of use do me a big favor like comment and subscribe it really helps me out with the algorithm and then it'll also keep you in the loop for every time that i release a new video once again my name is bill knapp i'm a full-time residential realtor here in the denver metro area if you're considering a move either within the city or from another state into our area i'd love a chance to see if we can work together all my contact details are listed here below give me a call text or email reach out we'll set up a zoom chat or see about jumping on a quick call see about working together and if i'm a possible fit for your needs thank you so much for sticking around to the end and I'll catch you guys on the next one.